Ahoy from Prague, I'm Paul Colto, that's Jojen, and today I just want to share with you five quick tips on how to teach better ESL lessons. I've been teaching English in Prague for five years and along the way I've picked up a lot of tips both from my own experience and from colleagues that have helped me to mould and refine my lessons and I want to share five of those tips with you today that will hopefully make your life easier, your lessons smoother and your students English better. So my first tip is probably the one that transformed my lessons quickly the most and just elevated them immediately and it's really simple. It's a technique called echo correct. So when your student makes a mistake you simply repeat the mistake to them and allow them to correct themselves. One of the most common examples of this is a student saying they was instead of they were. So when they say they was, you just simply go they was, with a nice quizzical look on your face, and then hopefully they'll go ah, they were. And honestly that really does keep the lesson smoother and it allows the student to correct themselves instead of you just hammering them with unrelenting corrections. My second tip is another one that's more focused on conversation practice and it just helps to keep the lesson a little bit more smooth and it's all about non-verbal corrections. So in your first ever lesson with a new student, explain to them that when you're having conversation practice, sometimes you might do some kind of non-verbal cue uh, that lets them know that they have made a mistake. So for example, if they forget to use the past tense when they should, you simply take your big thumb and you shove it over your shoulder as if to say, mm -mm, past. For example, if they say, yesterday I go for a walk, you're like, mm, yesterday I, yesterday, sorry, I went for a walk. Another common mistake is for students to forget to use the third person S. So for example, they might say, every day my mother speak to my brother on the phone and you can say, nice big three, a third person S. Ah, okay, sorry, every day my mother speaks to my brother on the phone. Another thing I do that might not work for you but seems to work quite well in my lessons is if I can see a student is struggling in their speaking at one moment to choose the right tense or the right piece of grammar, if they make a mistake, I'll give them a frown like this and when they get it right, I'll give them a nice big like that. Uh, it might not work for you, but I like it because it means I don't have to interrupt them so much when they're speaking. My third tip is a great tip I got on my TEFL course from my TEFL instructor, and that is to get your students to do your work for you, especially in terms of lesson preparation. So for example, if you have a student and you want to study an article with them from a newspaper or a website, don't you go and find and print that article, get them to find it and print it. Basically, anytime you're preparing a lesson, think to yourself, is this something that a student could be doing instead of me? And you will save yourself loads of time uh, and just have an easier life. My fourth tip is something I created myself and that is to make a custom dictionary for all of your students. This is amazing because it creates a whole load of vocabulary specifically related to their passions, hobbies, interests, job and life in general. Vocabulary that they really need and will use every day. And I recommend that you watch my video on how to teach vocabulary in an innovative way because it explains this technique very clearly and it's really simple and I really recommend you check that out. And my fifth and final tip is to make a starter pack for every student you have before you teach their first lesson. Now a lot of people will use an exercise book which goes through in order, you know, typical English teaching exercise book. I don't use those and I know a lot of purists uh, may find that abhorrent. But for me, most of my students want to practice conversation practice and they want a little bit of grammar. So what I do before I teach my first ever lesson with them is that I email them and I ask them exactly what grammar points are most important for them. And I will print out a load of exercises and put them uh, in a little file with a nice page on the front with their name on it to make it look sexy. And I'll also print out some everyday vocabulary sheets. Um, and I'll have so there'll be a section on grammar, a section on vocabulary, and I'll do this before the first lesson because then every lesson I can say I want two pages of grammar and one page of vocabulary for homework. And you don't have to go faffing around like running to offices, photocopying and printing stuff. You basically, when that first lesson, you're giving them the homework for the next 10, 15 lessons. It saves you a lot of time and it's a much, I think, smoother way to teach grammar and every lesson they'll come in and you can test them on what they've done and go through it with them and check any problems. Now for something completely different. Uh, two weeks ago, I went to Italy. I was very lucky to explore Bologna, Verona, Venice and Florence and I made a little time-lapse video and quite like it. I'd like to include it in this video and share it with you. So I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click like, uh, consider sharing it with anyone else you think might find it interesting and don't forget to subscribe. Come find me on Twitter and Instagram at Paul Colto and I post new videos here on YouTube every Sunday about international relocation advice, ESL teaching advice and lots and lots more. So until next time, toot toot. <laughs>